Okay, so when we look at um, our demo today, we're going to start with our first two points. So we have solar plexus and adrenal. Just like we talked about last weekend, if you wanted extra bonus points, you could hold that solar plexus in line with the third toe underneath the diaphragm and then get two fingers right on top of that pulse, that dorsal pedal pulse, yeah, to feel the energetics of what's happening in their body. We would hold that for about 30 seconds. And then our client today reports that she's feeling just a little bit under the weather, but we haven't talked about what that means. Um, but we can already see some really strong lines happening. So chances are it's just fatigue, um, fatigue and weakness in the system. Yeah. Then we move to our adrenal reflex, which is going to be half above, half below the diaphragm uh, and the waistline on the medial side of that plantar tendon. And then here we would do the hot towels, but they're still warming up, so we'll just pretend like we did the hot towels. Remember, when we when we wrap a client's foot, oh, and that might that might block the camera view. Um, uh, when we look at uh, doing the hot towels, we would keep that left side wrapped with the dry towel on, just to make sure that this side is warm and nice and comfy. And then we would start with our our relaxation techniques. So Sloppy Susan, just getting the ankle to move back and forth. Nice, vigorous warm up. Moving down to military train. Again, ankle focus technique, really making sure that we're able to rotate the talus so that there's no binding of that actual ankle joint. Then we go behind the knee. There we go. And sky view. Sky view. And, uh, <laughs> which is a new apartment complex sky opening in Tampa. Hashtag Ooh. sky view. Um, <laughs> We're just doing some really basic they should pay you commission calf them. massage, right? <laughs> um, uh, the whole goal with the calf massage is not necessarily to like effleurage, effleurage, effleurage. Mm -hmm. It's to palpate for the integrity of the calf. Um, notice any fluid retention. It's an assessment technique. Yes, it feels good. Yes, it feels nice. But at the same time, we want to feel what's happening in the tissues ourselves. And we're doing our push pulls. Getting some movement in the metatarsals. And we got some clicking around the knee reflex. So hypermobility in the lower body. Again, matches our lines that we saw on the plantar surface. Then after that, we're going to take our little bit of our shea butter and we're going to do our heel rotation, pushing and twisting. Can you get the hands in there? Mm -hmm. Is it good? Good Thank angle? You. Okay. Yep. And then knuckle roll. It's nice because I'm seeing the uh, medial side of your foot, of the foot work. Cool. It's not too lazy to get up. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. And we'll get a little bit of extra butter. We'll gloss the spinal reflexes. Again, we see lining. Yeah. So all the weakness. We're going to start by getting right at that pelvic line, thumb walking halfway up until the thumb can't walk anymore. Fingers move for leverage, and then continuing that walk to just below the bunion three times. At some point, do you sometimes check in with the client on how's the pressure or um, just feel? I'm I'm super bad about that uh, because my my perspective and my technique is more mm -hmm. assessment based. Yeah. So I'm not necessarily concerned with what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. Like yes, you know, for client retention, pressure is important. Oh, mm -hmm. by the way, we're massaging each of the toes three times at this point. Um, 
yes, client retention is important. Yes, if somebody wants you to go deeper, you should go deeper just as a therapist, like mm -hmm. as a service provider. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, to actively do the reflexology, mm -hmm. you should be at a light to medium pressure, three to four out of 10. Like that should be your baseline. Mm -hmm. um, because you never know where the sensitivity is going to happen. So especially with a new client, you know, I would rather go softer mm. than heavier because I would rather them get angry at me for not going deep enough than angry at me because I hit a point that made yeah. them jump off the table. Right. Okay. You know? But it is, it's, it's a dialogue. If you go into the, mm. the frock group and look up the point work mm. webinar that I did, there's a free code to get that. And I talk about the pressure bell curve um, mm. on that, how 20% of clients will, it's that 80-20 rule, you know, 20% of clients will have the pressure extremes, 10% mm. will not be able to tolerate any pressure, 10% uh, will require bone crushing pressure, and most clients will fall somewhere in between. Mm. So now we're moving into the big toe routine. Getting that medial side three times, then going under the plantar surface of the proximal phalanx five times, and then walking up the pad of the big toe five times in those five vertical sections, just clearing the zoomed in version of the zones on the big toe. And a little bit trickier to see, but we're going to yeah. curl the fingers over top. So we're getting a sky view on that. Yeah, the sky view, sky view, sky view. Curling sky over view. onto the medial aspect, or lateral aspect, rather, of the, the neck reflexes. Okay. And then we'll have you stay there because we're dorsal, dorsal surfacing it. Okay, gloss the dorsal surface, fingers together. We're going to do the lymphatic pump. Three vertical columns, three times each. The medial, the middle, and then the lateral. Number two, really great for any lymphatic congestion. Oh, and we got a point there, so we're just going to hold that point. So when it comes to the routine, the routine is what brings you from point A to point B. Yeah. But when you stop trying to master the routine because you have it, your hands remember it. Yeah. You start worrying about what's underneath your fingers instead of what happens next. And when you do that, you find the points that require your attention. And this is one of those. So we're holding it, applying a static pressure, waiting for the body to respond. And then once the body responds, we move on. That's how you treat a point in reflexology. If the body starts to guard against you, don't go in. If the body starts to let you in, go in. If nothing happens, move on. Right now, this point is making my finger feel like I just got plunged into an ice bath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the, the, the watery infection that we're dealing with here. Okay, but there's a nice sweat that broke out over the reflex and we're done. Okay, and that was our third pass. Now we do metatarsal shake, moving around all the bones. And then we're going to push the foot back from the ball on the plantar surface and use the fingers to walk down each of those four vertical valleys just once. If you'd like to do it multiple times, like if you're dealing with somebody who has a lot of congestion through here, a lot of lymphatic backup, you can do multiple times. Um, it's just a really sensitive area, and I don't like to get stuck here if work isn't needed. Oh. And around that same point, there's still an active congestion in the, the structural tissue. So I'm going to pin that point, and then I'm going to pull. Yeah, because there is physical restriction, I'm going to hold that point, and then I'm just going to do a little bit of traction to open that up. Ready? 
we're kind of mentally documenting where you are mm -hmm. as far as the reflex. Yeah, so like we've, where are we at? we've had yeah. two lower back points okay. so far, which makes sense with the hypermobility of the knee that we found on the um, during the relaxation techniques. Mm. Okay, and again, in the low back reflexes, we're just going to do a little bit of a vibration. So we hold the point and just give it a little jiggle. What that does for, from a sensory system aspect, which is our weekend, is it through the, through the jiggle, through the wiggle, through the nervous system stimulus, it carries the impulse deeper into the body. And it'll almost intuitively happen. Like you'll hold a point and you'll just feel that need to just start kind of rocking or moving back and forth. And that's really what we, what we kind of want. And that point opened, and we move on. And there's nothing through there. And metatarsal shake. We have the monster mash. We need somebody okay. to make the metatarsal shake. Okay. So now we're back onto the plantar aspect of the foot. I know a band. <laughs> I know a band. <laughs> um, and we're going to be walking up each of those vertical columns three times from the diaphragm guideline to the shoulder line guideline. Okay, and we have a little bit of congestion in through here. So I'm gonna slow down, but still kind of pump and move, kind of pushing that out a little bit. Push it out, push it out, push it out. Push it up, and we're good. Okay, then move on. Doing okay? Yeah. Because I'm moving around with things. That static holding of the phone. Okay, and the shoulder reflex is also very icy. So I'm going to take two thumbs, and I'm going to put direct pressure on that to kind of melt it with pressure. And is the iciness infection of water, or mm -hmm. is that where we're talking about the nervous system is not warming up because... Both. Of okay. Both. Okay, so we're holding, we're waiting, we're seeing some nice electrical impulses happening throughout the body, and we're just waiting for the reflex to release. Yeah, there's like nice little lightning strikes going all up and down the side of the body. And that's fun, fabulous, delicious. And then my body just released a little bit of heat. So when we think of, um, we talked about, we'll, we'll talk about this later at the sensory system in terms of that nervous system connection between client and therapist. When your body produces a reaction during a session, like that can be so much so much information in that little intuitive nudge that gives you that leg up with a client. Because your body is trying to tell you something about their body. Okay, then we move on to the plantar surface, get a little bit of cream. If we wanted to pick up the foot for leverage, we totally can. But we're going to do those three horizontal sections from the fifth vertical zone to the third vertical zone, three times each. Thumbs width down. Second. And then third. And again, we can see just all of that, that lining, all of that weakness through the digestive reflexes and into the chest lung space. And we're gonna switch hands and go vertical in each of those uh, vertical zones in line with each toe three times, just clearing the zones. If you ever need to fall back on a term to master the routine, that's what we're doing. We're making sure that we hit each of the zones clearly, concisely, with proper attention, not skipping over anything, which most reflexology programs and books will give you a list of reflexes to work if somebody has you know, diabetes or insomnia or digestive problems, we want to hit every area. 
because you never know where somebody's issue truly is. Three. One. Two. We got some stuff in through there, so we're gonna we're just gonna stay and erase the chalkboard a little bit. Upper thoracic. Upper thoracic. Yep. T1 through T7. That's along that edge of the first metacar metatarsal. Okay. I'll just give that a little bit of poke. Okay. Then down to horizontal zone four, the lower digestive reflexes. And then last one. Switch hands, go vertical. And the reason why we separate these two is because you need to know your reflexes for each zone. If we were to walk the plantar surface of the foot as one unit, you wouldn't be able to mentally distinguish where you were at any given time. So from a routine perspective, it's beneficial for you to separate those horizontal zones so that you know where you're at in terms of upper digestive, lower digestive, you know, horizontal zone two, zone five even, so that you don't get confused. Because the routine is like a map. It tells you where to go next. But if you don't have that map and you're lost in the middle of the woods and you're like, oh no, and this nasty reflex comes out of nowhere. Bad wolf. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm realizing that vertically too, because sometimes I'll kind of zoom past a vertical when mm -hmm. I'm in the horizontal. Yeah. Then we go back to the toes three times each. And fourth toe is a little bit restricted, so we're just going to hold that. Notice how my thumb instinctively went right to the solar plexus. Yeah. yeah. So just even though we're not stimulating that point, just naturally resting in that space can be really helpful. And it also gives me the freedom, like if I wanted to check her pulse one more time, I could. So I can notice, like as I hold this point... Is there a moment where her pulse changes? And does that correspond with the reflex letting go? If so, does her pulse get stronger, weaker, faster, slower? All the things. Okay, moving on. Moving on up. And three. I had somebody reach out via email who had trained with another reflexology instructor uh, who asked me a question about the solar plexus and the adrenal. And they said, you know, in our in our work, the solar plexus and adrenal come at the end of the routine why do you do it at the beginning i'm like well honey there are different ways to do reflexology there are different ways to do the same thing despite what some schools would have you believe um which i know because i trained with one of them you know but when we think of the purpose i found myself telling this person that the reason why we use the solar plexus and adrenal at the beginning and end of a session is to have contrast between how they feel at the start and how they feel at the end because the solar plexus point gives us an idea of where their nerves are at yeah gives us an idea of where that central nervous system bundle is at is it too tight is it hard is it soft is it fatigued is it spasmodic you know what's what's happening in the nerves 
the adrenals tell us where somebody's long-term hormonal cortisol drip is, their systemic inflammation, yeah? So throughout the session, it gives us an idea at the beginning, where are they at nervous system-wise, where are they at hormone-wise, and at the end, checking again. So if you have somebody that's like tender in the adrenal, then noticing, you know, if they're yeah. tender afterwards After. as well. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So now we're moving into the lower body reflexes. We're going to start with the Achilles tendon effleurage, just getting everything warmed up, glossed up, ready to be worked on. And from a sensory systems perspective, like this is just delicious. Like everybody loves this. So, you know, especially if somebody's wound up really tight, you might want to spend a spend a couple extra seconds here just to calm them down. Somebody dealing with plantar fasciitis, somebody dealing with ankle issues, like again, take a couple extra strokes just before we get into the complex. You know, give them give them some love. Give them some love. <laughs> Then we're going to hit the medial aspect of the calcaneus three times, switch, lateral aspect of the calcaneus, which we'll be able to see a little bit better on the other side. Sky cam. Sky cam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving on that. Okay. We're going to get you a jewelry. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is we're going to take that inside hand, find the lateral malleolus on the outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. If people are getting dizzy. I know, I know, I know. Oh, crap. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, palpate the posterior surface of the medial malleolus. Find that bone, the back of that bone. Medial or lateral hand comes out, and we're going to rotate as we move around that bone three times. Back to the beginning. Rotate, move, rotate, move, rotate, move. Clearing out the hip joint. This is that direct reflex for the hip ball and socket. So we really want to make sure that there's no impingement here. After that, we're going to do our dorsal ankle pump. Bring the fingers to the lateral aspect of the groin reflexes. We're going to pump all the way across three times. Going from the lateral malleolus to the medial malleolus. That dorsal ankle is the bridge between the two, and we're just knocking all the congestion off that bridge. Think of that bridge between the two, all that fallopian tube, vas deferens reflexes. Gets all mossy, gets all craggy in here. We just want to clean that up, sweep that out. And we're going to gloss that outside cuboid notch, which is at the proximal head of the fifth metatarsal, up, down, and below. We're going to trace that with our fingers three times. And these are all those hip knee leg reflexes. Which reminds me, I still need to respond to that comment. Somebody commented on that. I've gotta tell them, I've gotta show them. I did a video on that. Educate them, educate them. Always educate them. But have fun. But have fun, yes. <laughs> We're going to talk about that tomorrow in terms of marketing through social media. We're going to give you guys a little bit of a speech on using sensory tools to market your business. Yay. Okay. Then, last but not least, plant our surface of the heel. Horizontal two rows all the way across, three times each. You can see how my wrist is following for leverage. I'm not trying to strain my thumb. Switch. In line with each vertical zone three times. As a therapist, you too should have your sensory system activated at all times because you need to be both paying attention to what your hands are doing and what you're feeling underneath them and what your client is doing, paying attention for any facial itches, stomach gurgles, muscle twitches, you know, having one eye on the client and then one eye on your hands and the reflexes. Okay, and that's it. We're done. So now we relaxation technique, 
Sloppy Susan. Military Train. Calf Massage. And heel rotation. And then knuckle roll. And after we're done with the first foot, then we're going to wrap it, keep it nice and cozy and warm. Because warmth is important, unless they're having a hot flash, and then you can totally leave it out. Again, customizing to the sensory system of your client. And then we unwrap the gift that is the second foot. Okay. And we start from scratch. Part of the reason why we do the same routine on both sides, point work, point work is different because point work addresses what we find along the way. But the reason why we keep a routine consistent on both sides is so that the nervous system and sensory system know what to expect. They don't get overloaded by saying, I don't know where they're going next. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's coming. So I'm going to keep an, I'm going to keep an edge. I'm going to keep a, a knife in my back pocket. I'm going to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm prepared for whatever's coming down the road, uh, versus, you know, if they, if they know, oh yeah, that's right. He did the toes once and then he did this and then he did that. You know, the nervous system remembers and it's able to relax a little bit. Heel rotation. Speaking of sensory, I like that sound on the table. <laughs> Yeah, I try to avoid that that <laughs> piggy noise that the fleece makes. <laughs> there are times I can't. It's just like, I know. Turn up the music a little more. It's all good. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Then we walk our spinal reflexes. Shift in halfway for leverage. And I just want to stop here for two seconds because it's congested. And we'll hold the, do a lazy hold on the solar plexus. Give my thumb a break. So why are you doing that? On the solar plexus? Just, just to... When in doubt, solar plexus. Okay. Um, Lynn Booth, uh, who I had on the podcast... A couple episodes ago um, does vertical reflex technique VRT where she actually works on clients from a standing position or from a pressurized position on the extremities mm -hmm. um, and she talked about how the stimulus of standing opens up the nervous system to receive the work on a deeper level mm -hmm. and so we had a really interesting moment during that podcast episode recording where I asked her I'm like so I've noticed the the wiggling, the moving, the you know the extra stimulus besides the alternating pressure seems to have a deeper impact on the body. Do you think that that's the same reason? And she's like, yeah, I've never thought about that, but that would explain it. So sometimes having that extra stimulus mm -hmm. can send the impulses just that bit deeper. The new uh, Apple watches they measure three things for activity. One mm -hmm. is like walking or moving. And one of them is like standing. Ooh. They, uh, I think it's an hour a day. It's mm. recommended that you stand. Mm. Oh, I do know. That. So Interesting. Huh. Yeah. Huh. I'm actually doing something right. There you go. I stand. I stand. 
But what do you stand for, <gasps> Sandy? What do you stand for? I'm not sure I can say that in life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. I, you know, it's it's funny, but at the same time, like that can be a real that can be a real metaphor for us to play with. You mm-hmm. know, if somebody has constant reoccurring foot pain, like what what do you stand for? Yeah. What are your foundational beliefs that maybe, you know, are compromised or are causing some pain? Hmm. You know, if you keep, if you, you know, clients will often say, especially with like plantar fasciitis and stuff or neuromas, they'll say it hurts every time I take a step forward. Like, oh, okay. So what is it about, you know, your set of belief systems or your, you know, emotional bandwidth that is causing that to be, you know, the case for you? Okay, so we're going over the top of that neck reflex and then we're going to hit the dorsal surface. Sky Sorry, guys. Don't stand in front of anybody. There's a live feed you can watch. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> I just had a flash for like classes of the future. Like the teacher is literally standing up front, but everybody's yeah. watching the We're live watching feed that. in the same room. <laughs> That's what I'm doing right now. There you go. That's funny. Okay, so we have those three vertical columns three times each. We're moving from medial to lateral to help pump that fluid. I love that picture quality. There you go. <laughs> I can't read all the comments because of a little bubble that popped up, so I'm not reading them. A bunch okay. of people are watching. Some in the UK. Yeah. Because they get up this early on a Saturday night. They're five hours ahead. Exactly. So it's, their, it's their afternoon. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> okay, then we're going down the vertical columns once each. That didn't feel right, so we're going to do two. That doesn't feel right either, so we're going to hold that. Is that a gut feeling not feel right? or No, it's textural. textural. Yeah, it feels congested. Mm. Which, when we think of this as being upper back, left side, but also major lymphatic, you know. And then lower back as well. Just give that a... Give that a little press and pull. Or as Scott, our deep tissue expert, would say, pin and stretch. Mm. It's 6.40 in UK, someone just said. <laughs> I was just say 16.40. Something's covering it up. I, can't, I don't know how to make that go away, I'm afraid. I'll You're fine. Some. Don't worry about it. Talking in tongues and the isometric system. <laughs> uh, let's not bash our UK followers. No, I love UK followers. Uh, kind Actually, of... I'm friends with some of them because <laughs> true <laughs> the conversations over yeah. there. They're just awesome. Okay, then we move on to zone two. Each vertical zone three times. I find you have to kind of really hang on to them when they're mobile, like yeah. she is. Mm-hmm. There may be inner pockets of restriction, like her second toe had had a lot of restriction, and then this one, this one, I'm actually having to like stabilize in place. Mm-hmm. Wherever there is an area of deep restriction, there will always be an area of deep weakness. And so we're just going to hold that. I 
you have to mention somebody just said what a great pedicure she has. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Someone's jealous of it. I can half read it. But <laughs> The shoulder is not as not as bad as the other one. Mm. We don't have to stay there. Once, twice. Horizontal first. Again, we're stopping at that third toe because we don't want to cross over that plantar tendon. because it doesn't feel good to walk horizontally across that. Ooh, and this is, this is congested, so we're just gonna do a double thumb hold right over that pancreas. Oh, mm. yeah, pancreas. Pancreas kidney. And so we just wait, we hold, we wait, we observe, we smell, not really. It's just me. It's just me. It's just <laughs> Sandy. Okay. And there's a nice sweat that broke out over the reflex. So we're going to then move up each vertical zone three times two, three. Two, three, no more, no less, lest we risk spontaneous combustion. Been there, done that. <laughs> Clean up is just awful. Cleaned up the ashes. Mm -hmm. Can never get the smell out of the carpet. <laughs> you replace all your sheets. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then you have a ghost in the room, yeah, and it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just <laughs> so funny. I'm about a sage you got up here. Just... <laughs> the sage <laughs> alone sage is alone. not worth it. That's I'm jiggling funny. the camera. So oh my god, it's okay. I'm jiggling the routine. <laughs> okay, moving on to zone four. We can see again, just like all the lines indicating just weakness. We, we would need to nourish that. So methods of balancing would include soups, stews, specifically healthy fats, things that are nutrient rich, but also bioaccessible. Um, That's been my word for the month. Bioaccessible. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, that's bioaccessible. They're like, what? And I'm like, it's as confusing a word as reflexology, isn't it? What we think of like um, kimchi, uh, you know, fermented or um, pickled beets, uh, soups and stews, brisket that's been cooking for hours, like things that are already kind of melted, things that are mushy. Chili would be another really great example. Like anything that has that broken down component that the body can just streamline those nutrients. You know, that's what we talk about when we think of bioaccessibility versus a cold fibrous salad mm -hmm. versus a plate of steak and potatoes, you know, something that isn't, that, that has more fiber than it's worth. Okay. Then we move back to the toes three times each. Oh, that fourth toe. Mm, goodness. I'm going to hold that fourth toe and we're going to hold that spot that she found sensitive. Imagine. Vertical four. Vertical four. Hor horizontal four. Horizontal, well, three, no, four. Three, four. Ish. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then the toe twitched. Fabulous. So we'll move that out. 
Yay, so that's how you would also, that's how you could also treat a reflex point, is go back to the points that may be influencing it, that may be connected, that you already found, you know, were tight before, and do a double hold. Mm. The possibilities are endless. But we do this all within the context of the routine. Because if you get too far off course, you know, mm. it becomes an issue. Oops, we have a low battery. Uh-oh. Oh. 20%. Oh, 20%, that's fine. You can get through it, phone. We've only got a couple more minutes. Hold your tongue, technology. Has anyone ever spontaneously combusted here? Because it could be like the spirits draining the batteries. There you go. No, Facebook Live definitely does that all on its own. Oh, yeah. It's the spirit of Facebook Live. <laughs> Spirit of Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. Sucking your battery dry. Okay, Kelly's Effleurage, just getting everything nice and warm and glossy. do medial first two three outside let me fancy balancing but normally I would support doesn't feel very good when you when you like not support your client just FYI just trying to make sure that I don't compromise camera angle. Okay. Yeah. Posterior surface of the lateral malleolus behind that bone. Point, rotate. Point, rotate. Point, rotate. Point, rotate. Point, rotate. And we've got, we've got stuff. Ooh. Two. Ooh. God. God. Okay. We're gonna, we need to sweep some of this up. We're, and we're pulling. And we're raking. And we're just getting all that out. Is that fluid or tightness? Or? It's it's just stuff. It's just stuff. It's just a whole ball of wax. We just gotta. Mm. Just get it all out of there, and then we rotate again. Better. A little bit better. Points are coming to the surface. I think that should be fine. We don't want to pull too hard. Okay. Dorsal ankle pump. Clearing off the bridge between the two malleoli. And that's very much the function of these reflexes. We have the fallopian tubes vas deferens, which are like the reproductive bridge. But then we also have the psoas, which is that bridge between the lower back and the leg. Like it traverses that hip. Um, forming that muscular connection. Okay, then we go to our cuboid notch, proximal head of the fifth metatarsal, up the triangle, down the back of the triangle, across the bottom of the triangle. What's the battery at? 15? Ish. Yay. Probably. I'm guessing. I don't know. Okay. We'll do... It's not saying. Yeah. No worries. It hasn't died yet. Okay. So we'll do last section, finish up with the relaxation techniques, and then we'll do solar plexus adrenal. That'll be done. I'll come back. 
Just think of me as your little angel or whatever on my shirt. Or whatever, just like my yeah. post today. Yeah. Hold and vibrate. Gotta move. Gotta move it. Move it out. Mm. Swirling it now. Be gone, hip congestion. Be gone. <laughs> you have no power here. <laughs> oh, too funny. Be one with reflex point. Right. And last little bit. And back to relaxation. The scan, scan, not the scan. Scan. <laughs> scan, sky cam, sky cam. The sky cam of the, the uh, push bowls. Yeah. It actually took me a while to realize I had to push it down. <laughs> hmm. Hence the name. Hence the name. Push bowl. It doesn't register right away. <laughs> it was like, I, yeah, it's. That seems to be a, a sandy issue, not necessarily. Not necessarily the world. It's, I have trouble knowing that. Why don't other people think like that? So, solar plexus, check pulse. Okay, 10%. Okay. The pulse is much slower. It's much more even. But you can even see the color difference on the feet, like mm -hmm. the right foot has more pink, the left foot does not. Um, we found more hip stuff on that side. There's a little bit of circulation issue from one side to another. I can also feel that in her pulse. Um, the left pulse is weaker by far. So something we could also recommend, you know, in addition mm -hmm. to the nourishment, making sure that the hips are moving, the hips are mobile, you know, that one side isn't bottling up all the tension. Finish with the adrenal reflexes for about 30 seconds, and that is our routine, start to finish. Yay. Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Finish.